Welcome to all of you joining us online today. Uh, those of you from St Barnabas, uh, from St Paul's, from the wider community in Shadwell and or Woodley and from further afield. Due to the uh, coronavirus pandemic, all churches have suspended uh, meeting together for public worship, but we have not suspended being the church. Even though we won't be able to gather for some time, we'll continue to worship as individuals, as families and online together. Whether together or apart, we are still united to each other in Christ. The church is still here in this time of emergency. We want to pray for you and we want to support you as we navigate these uncertain times together. So please reach out and get in contact with us. Every Sunday we'll be sharing a short video online with some worship, some teaching and a time of prayer. This online worship is a reminder that we are still the body of Christ, though we can no longer meet together. So this morning, Ben, one of our worship leaders from the 4pm service here at St Paul's, will be leading us in a song. We'll be listening to a passage from John 19. Uh, I'll be bringing a short message and Joe will be leading us in prayer. So let's pray as we begin. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you that you are with us now. Wherever we are, whatever we're feeling, thank you that you are with us by your Holy Spirit. As we meet together virtually this morning, open our minds and our hearts to what you're saying to us today. Amen. So Ben's now going to lead us in our song today.
So our Bible reading is taken from John 19, verses 25 to 27. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you're anything like me, you might be experiencing shock and disorientation by recent events. It's like the, the rug of normality has been pulled out from under us. Many of us might also be experiencing fear and deep anxiety about the days that lie ahead. A few weeks ago, the coronavirus was a concern, but it was a concern that was overseas and felt distant and far removed from our lives. Now we are living with the troubling reality of what a global pandemic looks like and feels like. And we're learning new and terrible phrases, such as panic buying, self-isolation, and social distancing. Today is, of course, Mothering Sunday, but for families up and down the country, it is a Mothering Sunday like no other. Normally, many families would be gathering together to celebrate, but that is just not possible this year. And many will face today uh, alone and in isolation from others. Today's poignant reading from John's Gospel shows a different form of social isolation. We read about Mary, the mother of Jesus, standing near to Jesus as he was crucified. Yes, Mary was physically present with her son at the time of his crucifixion and death, but she could not hold him and she could not help him. She was distant, she was helpless, and she was cut off from him. It's hard to imagine the agony that Mary would have experienced as she watched her beloved son dying a cruel and terrible death on the cross. The cross speaks to us of desolation and of all that is dark in this world. The cross was the moment when, through Jesus, God experienced all the evil and suffering that the world had to offer. And when days are dark as they are now, we need to remember that God knows all that we're feeling and all that we are experiencing. On the cross, he experienced all of this and more. He is no stranger to fear, to pain, to suffering and to death. And yet, even in that moment of intense pain and agony, Jesus looked outward beyond himself. He looked to his mother and he cared for her. He saw her, his, her, his mother's pain and her vulnerability and provided a home for her with the beloved disciple. As followers of Jesus, we are called to serve others and to be with them in their pain and in their suffering. While there have been ugly scenes of the selfishness of those who panic by and who empty the supermarkets, there have equally been, equally been stories of altruism and of how communities have begun to rally around and care for those who are most vulnerable to this disease. We, as Jesus' followers, are called to reach out to those who are fearful, to those who are sick, who have, been, who have been bereaved. We may not be able to be physically with them, but we can call them, we can text them, we can do their shopping, and we can pray for them. This present crisis is a reminder to all of us 
to be faithful as our, to our calling as Christians and to love our neighbour as ourselves. The cross leads to death, but in Jesus, death leads to resurrection and to new life. In a few weeks' time, we'll be celebrating Easter and Jesus is bursting from the grave. Now, this Easter will be quite unlike any other Easter in living memory. It will be a solitary and a quiet Easter. And yet the circumstances that we are facing do not take away from the reality of Jesus' resurrection. Whether we are in good times or in bad, Jesus is still risen and he is our eternal hope. We may have to live in the shadow of the cross and the grave for a while longer, but as Christians we know that God is ultimately in control, even when it doesn't feel like he is. Every storm eventually passes and the sun shines again. This storm will pass, though it may not be for a while. In the meantime, we do what Christians have done throughout all generations, whether they experience persecution, plague, pestilence, war or disaster. We hold fast to God, who, is, who assures us that he will be with us in all things. We remember all that he has done for us through Jesus. We follow his example and we love others and we pray. So during this difficult and challenging season in life, join with me as we pray, as we love and as we hope. So let's pray. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Joe is now going to lead us in some prayers. Let's pray. Let us pray for our world, where the spread of coronavirus is reaching many countries and impacting the lives of so many. We pray for leaders and governments to make wise decisions about how to run their country in this pandemic. We pray for all healthcare systems as they look after those who are ill. We ask that you would particularly protect and strengthen the healthcare and essential workers on the front line through the coming weeks. We pray you would comfort all those who grieve and mourn the loss of loved ones at this moment. We ask, Lord, that you would guide and equip scientists globally as they work to understand the virus and create a vaccine. And we pray for cooperation amongst nations as they seek to put an end to this pandemic. We pray that people across the world would respond to all that is being asked of them to protect the most vulnerable in our societies, that people will self-isolate, not panic by, and will take care of their neighbours. We pray for an end to this pandemic, and in this spiritual and physical battle against disease, that many will see your saving power and choose to follow you, Jesus. We praise you for all that you will do, almighty God. We pray for our loved ones. All of us will know someone who's vulnerable to the impact of this disease, or is suffering, or is in anxiety. In a moment's silence, we lift those people to you and ask that you would send your angels to guard and protect them. Here are some words from Jeremiah 17, verses seven and eight. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes, its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. 
We pray for ourselves that in this time of crisis, we learn to trust you, God, and that we become rooted in your promises to hold and sustain us. Thank you, Father, that you love us so deeply and care for us so much. Thank you that we can talk to you about all that worries us. Help us to seek you in the days and months ahead and to grow in faith. Let us join our prayers together now with the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Finally, this evening at seven o'clock, churches together are asking Christians across the nation to light a candle, to remind us that Jesus is the light in the darkness and to pray for the world. We will be lighting a candle and praying and we hope you do too. Sending you so much love. See you soon. So as we uh, end our worship uh, this morning, let's just end with a blessing. So Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you now and always. Amen.